Hey guys, it's me, Dave March, the spy guy. I'm having a little bit of an interesting day today. Uh, I watched, okay, so I I created a local page. Uh, if people want to support this, it's I uh, have the link in the uh, in the links below. Locals is a kind of Patreon alternative set up by a guy named Dave Rubin, who is a kind of libertarian uh, podcast, well, like YouTube show. Now, he's uh, got, a, it's a few other people, it's a bit nice, but it's like an old style message board. And you can go there, you can interact with me. I'll be on there when I'm over I'm online and you can talk to me and there's some people from in the not spy guy I've been on a few other locals boards and there I've dropped spy guy stuff there and now they're following some other stuff that I was doing from a different show there and yeah and it's more like this you know if you want to know what I've written you want to know what I've uh, done you can go to my locals board I put all the links there I'm taking uh, that's going to be kind of my new kind of website for myself like kind of creative page and I can put in some updates and I'll be dropping the, all the videos here there uh, now there's a, a you can also give me money there's like a tip jar there you can just pay them it gives you they take a cut of 10 percent versus YouTube's 30 percent or whatever. So if you want to give me money there, you can do it there and that'd be great. Uh, not, not that I expect much, but I'm like, hey, give me a dollar and make me happy. Uh, the other thing that I did today is I went on uh, Rumble and I have a vi the video uploading there is the Hunt for October review. That's kind of my test video. Uh, I, uh, I did not realize because here's the reason you go to Rumble instant monetization they have a whole system i was watching something i was watching an interview yesterday so instant monetization is at the time of release of your publishing of your video to their site you get to choose uh where it goes and they will send and set it up for you on youtube they will set it up for you on other places and that, and that kind of stuff they're family owned uh, family and friends own kind of libertarians, kind of Canadian guys who just don't look at what's going on in the United States of America like I do and say, holy crap, what's going on in your country? So that's something that's happening that I wanted to uh, say. So it's not as good as YouTube still. They do not have a super chat feature. They do not have a, they do not do live stream. That's their number one goal for next year, apparently. They're just, and they're really slow right now because of what happened yesterday, which I covered on YouTube about YouTube, like censoring people really badly. That being said, they like, they have like viral competitions. Uh, remember when we used to have a video that would come out of nowhere and suddenly everyone was watching it? Uh, what was that oh, Wopan style or whatever it was uh, when that guy from South Korea did that video and we, everyone watched it and it was so open gang style or whatever it was uh, that uh, that kind of stuff used to happen and it hasn't been happening since 2013 and or at least 2015 and it's just become YouTube's becoming corporate and they're killing off the small guys and my best example is uh, a lot of you guys are not like me, as we know, uh, but there's a right wing pro, uh, guy named Dan Bongino and he's on Fox News and stuff. Uh, uh, when I first joined, I, I created a page on, on Rumble, but I didn't do anything for it for three weeks. And back then uh, he had 800 followers on Rumble. He now has 800,000 in three weeks. Now we know why he's doing that, but there's like, they're no longer, they don't throttle your channel on Rumble. They want to do stuff for you. Uh, you they, they will, they seek out, they have, well, you know, there's a bunch of advertising networks out there that are, don't care about your politics. They just won't, they're involved in all sorts of things all over the place. And they, they, they have contacts with these advertising companies and they will just advertise on whatever is, is appropriate. So that's what is going on on Rumble. And from my understanding, their pay is com more competitive than YouTube. 
they demand higher, a little bit higher processing fee and they don't take as much as YouTube. So yeah, that's Rumble in a nutshell. Um, they just wanna, they want, they want YouTube back the way it was. And so YouTube is not going back the way it was because of the corporate takeover. So they're going to be YouTube 2.0 and we're really seeing a fracturing of this, this stuff. Like I said, I've had a video uploading for the last hour, the Hunt for Red October review, remember? It's still being embedded, still being searched because unfortunately for them, uh, everyone's fleeing YouTube or fortunately for them, everyone's fleeing YouTube. But unfortunately for us, the creators, we have to suffer from the fact we're all desperately trying to upload all our crap on uh, on the Rumble. Uh, so I, I want to get into, this is like my Rumble video. Uh, there is, I'm going to talk about a bit. Now I'm going to get to the book. I'm going to hold on. Uh, the book I'm reviewing today is This Town, Mark Lebovich, Two Parties and a Funeral Plus Plenty of Valley Parking in America's Gilded Capital. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to this in a few minutes. I just wanted to put that out there. But we're going to talk a little bit because I don't like to do breaking news, but this one's kind of interesting. Uh, uh, Facebook fact checker funded by Chinese money through TikTok. It's on, it's coming from Epoch Times, which is this kind of right-wing news source, but they're just covering stuff that, you know, uh, the left doesn't want to cover as much uh, because, you know, big tech owns a lot of these people now and they're in cahoots. That's why they're killing, trying to kill off all their channels. Uh, while Facebook portrays its army of fact checkers as independent, the money behind at least one carries a distinct take Tate. One fact checker, lead stories, is partly paid through its partnership with TikTok, a social media platform run by a Chinese company that owes its allegiance to the Chinese Communist Party. Great. Moreover, the organization that's supposed to oversee the quality of fact checkers is run by Pointer Institute, another TikTok partner. So Facebook's allowing a, one of its competitors owned by a communist country to fact check all this stuff and then you wonder why you never learn anything anymore okay so bite dance uh pledging party allegiance you have to do that uh national security like tiktok's being investigated by the government as a uh, and con and congress as like being uh a national security threat so this is kind of the end where I wanted to get into this is the back end of the article. And I will put a link to below for those who want to see these things because I've been talking to some of the people, uh, subscribers and people in our little community. And they say, what, what, Dave? I don't know anything about what you're talking about. So Facebook fortifies its justification for the use of fact uh, checkers by saying that need, need to be certified by the International Fact Checking Network. The organization was founded in 2015 and is run by the nonprofit journalism school Pointer Institute. TikTok listed as partners both Pointer and it's another fact checking project MediaWise. Pointer marketing director Tina Dianelkin declined to say how much the organization gets paid by ByteDance. So we do not disclose details of business context. Point and partnered with TikTok this year for fact checking and media literacy work. Oh, and all these organizations are basically funded by Facebook and are full of former CNN journalists, from what I can tell. She said, Point remains as, maintains its editorial independence and follows its ethics policy. In 2019, ICN was almost entirely funded by EBA founder Pierre Om, Omi Dyer, a major Democrat donor, as well as Google and progressive billionaire George Soros. Great. <laughs> and Facebook is also listed as one of its private donors, too. Who gets certified is decided by the ICC. IFCN seven member advisory board made up of representatives of fact checking organizations. Only two seem to have any experience covering US political news. One is Glenn Kessler, former foreign policy reporter, now the head of the fact checking feature at the Washington Post. Kessler and his team earlier this year published a book called Donald Trump and His Assault on Truth. Uh, well. The other is, is Angie Dro Drobnik Holman, editor in chief at PolitiFact, which is owned by Pointer. So, like, all your everything we're being told checked on and our show is being demonetized on youtube is because all this giant network of uh 
corporations and other groups of people. And it's not like, I'm not, it's not a conspiracy theory, guys. It's just the way these guys are working together to squeeze out the little guys like us. So, and that brings me to my book today. This town reads, well, it was written in the 2012, 2012, uh, two, no, 2008. And it covers a bunch of stuff that happened starting with the rise of Obama. I remember being very still on, to, this was back when I was still listening to Sirius XM and there was a political show. I can't remember what it's called, but uh this show was run by this like nice reporter and she was very bubbly and she was just like what the, the the political gossiper show i guess would be she's like oh yeah we have everyone wants to know if they're in this town and what's being said about them and yet yet it was very like i don't know how these people exist in this day and age uh, insiders this was back when you know you would have like the top hollywood elite would be showing up at the uh, newspaper uh, newspaper journalism thing and the president would be up there and uh, thankfully Trump stopped doing that. It just showed how badly intertwined big media and big government exist in the United States. Big ticket Washington funerals can make such great networking opportunities. I'm just reading from the dust jacket. Power mourners keep stampeding down the red carpets of the Kennedy Center, handing out business cards, touching base. And there is no time to waste in a gold rush, even or especially at a solemn tribal event like this. Washington, this town, might be loathed from every corner of this nation. Yet these are fun and busy days at the nexus of big politics, big money, big media, and big vanity. There are no Democrats and Republicans and more in the nation's capital, just millionaires. That is the grubby secret of the place in the 21st century. You will always have lunch in this town again. No matter how many elections you lose, apologies you make, or scandals you endure. In this town, Mark Lebovich, chief national correspondent for the New York Times Magazine, presents a blistering, stunning, and often hysterically funny examination of our ruling classes. I don't want to know if I say that on YouTube. Uh, media industrial complex. Through his eyes, we discover how the funeral for a beloved newsman becomes the social event of the year. How political reporters are fetishized by their ability to get their names in the pre-dawn emails sent out by the city's most powerful and puzzled over journalists. How a disgrace still <clears throat> aid uh, can emerge, overcome ignominy, and maybe emerge with a more potent brand than many elected members of Congress, and how an administration bent on changing Washington can be sucked into the ways of this town with the same ease with which tea parties and surgeons can once elect settle into, a long, into it like a warm bath. Outrageous, fascinating, destined to win, uh, which a whole host of or new friends, this town is must reading whether you're inside the beltway or just trying to get there. Good God, people, this could have been written in Versailles, about Versailles before the French Revolution. This book is insane. And let's go. There was like some sort of, I gave it to my dad for his birthday, 2013. That's a little sad. This is my dad rolling around. this town. Tim, uh, it, was, it starts at Tim Russert's funeral. You might remember him. Uh, it, it talks about like, you never, whatever happened to the uh, vice president uh, under Bush, whose name escapes me. Uh, he's a part of running the mo one of the most powerful lobbying groups in, in Washington. When Kurt first got to town, um, I'm just going to open it up. When Kurt first got to town, he immediately noticed that people on the inside or the people who seem to have that air of being in Solomon, you can tell that there were certain people that everyone kind of gravitated to. They walked in and people just knew who they were. I remember thinking, I wonder what it would be like to be one of these people, the cool kids. One ki cool kid was Kevin Madden, a handsome devil press secretary for John Boehner, the Republican leader of the House. Every Monday when the House was in session, Madden presided over a meeting of Republican press secretaries on the Hill. Bardella, then working for Bill Bray, always made a point of showing up early. He sat near the front of the room, nodded a lot, and asked questions. He was eager to learn and improve, and was conspicuous in a room of 
that otherwise had the ambiance of a board college class. More important, Bardello was eager to show he was eager to learn and improve. Uh, there's a thing in here, I can't remember what it was, but, uh, oh, here we go. He had, it's, it's a whole story on Bardella, but here's the end of it. Uh, less than four months after he was fired, Bardella was the subject of a 7,400 word profile by Luke Mullins in Washingtonian Magazine, the glossy monthly that club members pick up in the checkout line at Whole Foods. The story's headline this surely was Kurt Bardella, the comeback. Oh, people go, they resorting through revolving doors of power. So you get yourself elected to Congress, you have to you do a couple of terms there, then you get yourself a corporate lobbying degree, uh, gig, pay, getting paid tw three or four times as much money to go back in and do it again. Uh, again, It's just like unbelievable country the United States is. You guys have no idea how bad it's gotten. Like. The guy, there's like the guy who got Hillary Clinton, her book deal was also working for the publisher. <laughs> like her agent was also working, for, was also the agent of the publisher. In real estate, they have so many car, uh, controls. Anyways, I don't know. At one time, this is kind of like a great book. If you want to know how the United States works, this is a book for you. If you want to know how bad it is, read this book. It's made to be funny. It's like a joke. Except for people's lives are being destroyed by these people. Anyways, on some ways, I want to give it zero out of 100 just because it's so disgusting in some ways. In other ways, I'm going to give it an, I'm going to give it an 82 because it's a really fun book to read. If you want to know what's going on in your country and actually get an understanding of what's going on, read this town. And uh, you will also understand why they wanted to get rid of Trump so bad because he was ruining their mail ticket. Anyways, uh, I, I, I'm, I know I'm not supposed to be trying to get too political, but I, I, I can't help it. That's who I am. That bothers you don't watch the channel, like Andy Signore says. But I'm not like I used to be angry all the time. Uh, uh, we're in a very, inter hey, this is uh, the day that in the, Half uh, like 30 minutes, according to the Supreme Court, will decide whether or not to get involved in the election. If you're watching this 20 years from now, that was why I'm so frantic today. Uh, right. And uh, I'm going to go and uh, go on Rumble, uh, get this thing up on Rumble. I'm going, at the speed things are going on Rumble, it won't be ready for a while. <laughs> Anyways, uh, hey, I'm the sky, spy guy. If you like this, like, share, subscribe, follow me on Locals. Bye-bye. Uh,